Coming up on Doctype, are your style sheets and just your style an incomprehensible mess? Then it's time for a makeover with a CSS framework. Then, still debugging with view source and alert pop-ups? It's time to get with the times and use some real tools. So trash that crusty graph paper and bust that TI-83+, plus because it's time for Doctype. <laughs> This episode of Doctype is brought to you by Viewpoint and Less Everything. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that wants to learn a little bit of JavaScript or a developer that thinks everything they make looks like crap, Doctype is here to show you the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your next project to the next level. Mm -hmm. Welcome to episode four. A new hope? <laughs> No, Doctype episode four. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. So the other episodes of Doctype were kind of just like prequels. Yeah, and you can't really count the prequels. So like the prequels, perhaps your website has a little bit too much funky and not enough fresh. We'll take a look at three different CSS frameworks that can help you spruce things up. CSS frameworks provide the basic foundation for the styling of your website. Now, typically CSS frameworks can include typography settings, grid frameworks, browser resets, and that kind of thing. Now, before you start building your website, it's a good idea to pick a CSS framework because it can be pretty tough to add one later. Up first is Blueprint. Blueprint is the framework that I've seen used most frequently. Now, Blueprint is basically just a set of CSS files with a couple of classes, actually a lot of classes, that you can use in your web page. Now, Blueprint is pretty cool because of its grid framework, and it's pretty easy to get into, too. Let's check it out. Blueprint uses a 24-column layout by default, which is nice if you need tight, granular control of your layouts. It also includes some nice styling for typography and forms. This is nice if you need more than just the reset and grid CSS to get started. If you're a bit more advanced and you've already mastered Blueprint, you should definitely check out Compass. Compass isn't so much a CSS framework as much as it is a plugin architecture for SAS, or the syntactically awesome stylesheet language. Here's what's cool about Compass. By using SAS, Compass, and Compass plugins, you can declutter your markup of all the classes a framework like Blueprint leaves behind. You can use any CSS framework you want, like Blueprint or the 960 grid system. A great one to check out here is SUSE, which is an awesome grid plugin for Compass. Compass allows designers to share code more easily the way programmers do. This is a great way to get involved in the web design community. If you don't like the weight of all the other CSS frameworks out there, you should definitely check out the one kilobyte CSS grid. This is good if you don't want reset CSS and typography and all that other stuff, and all you really need is a grid system. Now, the thing that I really like about it is that you can easily customize it, and it's nice and small. Sounds like that'd be pretty good for a one-off site. Yeah, definitely. It's really fast and simple, and sometimes that's all you need. Now, before we go on, it's time for a quick word from one of our sponsors. Viewpoint is the simplest and most elegant way for creative professionals to present their work to clients. No more emailing images or manually building presentations. Password-protected project galleries keep all your work organized in one place. Organize your files by project, control and gather client feedback, automatically version control your designs, and present images, videos, or flash animations. So whether you're developing a simple website design, an online banner campaign, or a complex web application, Viewpoint easily manages the design review process and keeps everyone on track with getting designs approved. Viewpoint is a hosted web application created by designers from real-world experience. Get your work approved quickly. Get Viewpoint. When you're building a web page and something's not quite right, nothing's more valuable than knowing what's going on inside the browser. Fortunately, our modern browsers give us the ability to peek inside and even tweak pages on the fly. Today we'll be looking at three tools, most of which share functionality. We're going to be looking at Firebug for Firefox, the Web Inspector for Safari, and the Developer Tools for Internet Explorer 8. If you're developing on Chrome, they're called developer's tools, but they're almost identical to Safari's web inspector. So getting started. For Firebug, go to getfirebug.com and install the extension. Then click the little bug in the bottom right side of the screen to bring up the tools. For Safari, open the Preferences pane and under the Advanced tab, click Show Develop Menu and Toolbar. Then click Develop, Show Web Inspector. 
In IE8, press F12 to bring up the developer tools. The first tab you'll usually see is the HTML or the Elements tab. This shows you the current structure of the page. It actually shows you the page as it is now, not as it was when you loaded the page initially. It'll show you all the changes you've made via JavaScript, and that's something that View Source just can't do. The HTML tree can be expanded, explored, and edited in place. When you select an element, the inspector to the right will show you the properties and the CSS styles, which is extremely helpful when you're designing a page. You can even edit the CSS right from the pane. Another neat trick is the item selector. It looks like a box in Firebug, a magnifying glass in Safari, and a pointer in IE. Simply click it, and then click any item on the page, and the HTML inspector will be open to that particular element. The JavaScript console is another invaluable tab in these tools. The JavaScript console allows you to interact with the JavaScript environment on the page, allowing you to set variables, call functions, and inspect objects. Just type in any JavaScript code or any variable name at the line at the bottom, and it'll be run in the context of the page. The console is really helpful if you need to know the value of a variable at any given time. The last tab we're going to look at is the Resources, or Traffic tab. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer doesn't even have this tab. The Resources tab allows you to view all the resources that your page has loaded up, including images, style sheets, JavaScripts, and even Ajax calls. If you're not using these tools yet, you might want to start now. It could save you some headaches in the very near future. Do you want more out of life? Then what you really need is less. Less everything. Less everything are two cool guys that do great stuff like less projects, easily manage multiple projects, prioritize tasks, and assign tasks to people. Less accounting. The accounting app for small businesses to save you pain and suffering. Less time spent. Track your time and avoid billing mistakes. And of course, less comp. Jim and I went to less comp in 2009, and 2010 should be even better. To learn more, check them out at lesseverything.com. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Doctype. Be sure to check out our Facebook fan page and follow at Doctype TV on Twitter. Also, if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you'd like to subscribe, check us out on iTunes or add our RSS feed to your reader. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype. <laughs>